Screw Code Sports Talk. I am your host, Andrew Wright. Here is my co-host, Cody Johnson. And we are sticking with our theme of fantasy baseball. Uh, in previous videos, we were being positive. Now we're going to be negative. <laughs> yes, because we got to be consistent. <laughs> um, absolutely. Uh, just like a good hitter. Uh, I had to say it. I know, it's a stupid pun. Just, you know, if, you laugh, if you laughed at it, I appreciate it very much. <laughs> but my wife right now is shaking her head. <laughs> um, I really want to talk about basically two players that I think are overrated that are really talked about. I had more, uh, but I, I really feel strongly about these two players. Um, so I really wanted to bring it to life. <laughs> The first guy I have is Giancarlo Stanton. I think he's completely overrated this year. I, I actually really like Giancarlo Stanton. I wanted to get him last year. The issue that you have with Giancarlo Stanton is his injuries. Right. He constantly gets injured. He can't stay healthy. In baseball, um, you know, you have a blister on your finger, you're out for three days. I mean, yeah, if you're a pitcher, you're out for about 18 starts. And yeah. I found so. out with Rich Hill, thank you. <laughs> One blister. Yeah, of course, months. of course, it was a Dodger. <laughs> but uh, in all reality, actually, Jim Carlos Stanton, he hit 240, uh, but he had 27 home runs and 74 RBIs last year. Now, in fantasy baseball, you look for consistency. You look for you look for batting averages. Uh, with Jim Carlos Stanton batting 240, that kind of scares you a little bit, mm -hmm. but. When you when you play fantasy baseball, to have a guy hitting like 240, but he has over 25 home runs, it's a good trade off because you're still getting a lot of points for the for that guy. But his projections this year is 250. He's going to hit 255, mm -hmm. 37 home runs and 99 RBIs. My biggest complaint is first his batting average. Now these are numbers that are projected if if he stays healthy. He's not. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna say that right now. Yeah, he's not. He's not going to. Believe me, I believed it last year. I was like, man, he's probably gonna be really healthy this year. He's gonna have a great year, and he was until he got hurt. But um, his batting average, he he's not gonna hit 250. I don't see it, and it's not because he's not gonna be playing those games. Those like you know, he'll miss what uh, 50 games probably. Right. Um, it's not because um, he's going to miss those games. What it is is he strikes out a ton. Yeah. He swings at a lot of bad pitches. Um, I mean, we watch the World Baseball Classic. If you see some of his at bats, mm -hmm. a lot of his swing and misses are just like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, geez, China saw that from <laughs> from their couch in Hong Kong. I mean, it, it, it's seriously, it's seriously really bad with the stuff that he swings at. And it's a it's a it's a traditional power hitter. I mean, yeah. that's what it is. A power hitter, a lot of the times, doesn't hit for average. Now, the great ones, they will hit for average and they will hit for home runs. He's got incredible power. I mean, if you can guarantee me that he's going to hit 240, it, even if you can guarantee me that he's going to hit 230, but he's going to play every single day, mm -hmm. then I'll get him because I know he's going to have over 30 home runs. Right. Probably will have 40 home runs. But if he's not going to play every game, no, I, I don't want him because he's going to get injured. Um, I, it, so if you're looking to, to see who you wouldn't draft, I'm not drafting Giancarlo Stanton. If, I, if he's available in about like round 15 and I need an outfielder, I'll go after him because I'll run the risk. Because mm -hmm. probably by that time, he'll be my third or even fourth outfielder. Mm -hmm. um, and he's worth the risk then because he's gone deep. Um, yeah, it's a big if. It, it honestly is a big if if he can play. Yeah, it is such yeah. a huge. I mean, how can you how can you trust a guy that's been injured every single year and he's only getting older? Mm -hmm. He's twenty seven, so he's closer to thirty. And when you get to thirty in any sport, you have to adjust your game. You got to adjust your game, and he obviously hasn't even done it. Still, you're right. Um, honestly, I don't even know. Just based off of history and numbers that I'm looking at, and even last in our fantasy baseball league last year, he actually was dropped, I think, 
I want to say about three-fourths of the way through the season, and there's an opportunity where I could have picked him up because I needed an outfield badly, and I passed on him just because I think at the time he was batting, I think, 230 or 235. Even though he had a lot of home runs, I think at the time he had like 20 three home runs, which was pretty good for around the time of around the time we were playing and considering the games he missed. His average is still real low, which I really couldn't get past. And as I'm looking at the numbers now, his strikeout rate has just increased over time. The only the only season that he had less than 100 strikeouts was 2015 when he when he only played 74 games. And that was still 95 strikeouts, which is almost essentially he struck out like one and a fourth time per game. And even now, he had almost as many strikeouts. He had, he basically struck out almost twice per game last season. Yeah. So you can just tell it's not there. His on-base percentage is slowly declining. Uh, his slugging percentage, though, has dropped as well, too. It was at about a 600 last season, or in 2015. Now, in 2016, it didn't even get to 500. As a power hitter, you're going to want that to go up. Uh, I just, I don't see any positives of having him on the team. I get it, like you're going to get the every now and again home runs and, you know, uh, two run home runs here and there where it looks great. Consistency, though, is what I look at when I want someone on my team and I don't think he'd be consistent. I would almost say that you can make a better case for Curtis Granderson to be on your team if you need an outfielder before, Grand, before um, Stanton. Uh, and that's just because I, I see more upside um, with Granderson than I do with Staten, and I just don't see it with Staten anymore, other than just home runs, but I need someone that has more than that. Yeah. And with, you know, if you're playing 115 games and you only have, you know, 21 extra base hits, I can't, that's just not a lot for me. Yeah. So I, that's, I would probably just stay away from him for all intents and purposes. I mean, like I, I said last week, the guys, when he hits, when he get, makes contact with the ball, it, it bounces off like it's a tennis ball. Right. And, it's incredible how far the guy can hit it, but it's when he makes contact. Right. Now, like I like I already said, you know, if you can tell me that you know he's going to stay healthy, I know he's going to get 35 home runs. I'll take it in a heartbeat. But it, that's that's a big if, mm -hmm. and that's that's something that am I willing to risk that right now? From what I've seen year after year after year, no. Right. Because I don't think it's going to happen. Right. Now, if the batting average went up to about like 275, 280, and then you get the 30 plus home runs, I, I would even say, shoot, I'll take them in round 10 just because that's some pretty good production. You know, but I can't do it with the missing games. And it's kind of hard to say missing games because one of the seasons that he did miss part of the year is he did get a baseball into the face, and that I think yeah. it cracked his uh, orbital lobe. That was one of those injuries that you just you can't foresee. Right, and so it was a freakish injury, and I don't know, maybe you can make a case that since then he's not the same, because when he was, when he's playing in 2014, when he played 145 games, he was on. I mean, he had 105 RBIs, 37 home runs, he had 32 extra base hits, 300 total bases. That's really good numbers, and then just to see the decline of only 21 extra base hits, only 200 total bases, 40, less than 75 RBIs, there must be some coincision with that as well, um, but I probably for now until I see a little bit more improvement for as young as he is to only 27. And here we were in the last video talk about Ian Kinsler being underrated. He's 34, yeah. and he's he's running laps around these young kids, and he's not only hitting for he can hit for power, but he can hit consistently. And I would need to see some something similar in Staten's game for me to get excited. Yeah. So. Uh, another guy I wanted to bring up. Um, and say I would not draft him. A lot of people have Eduardo Nunez really high. The reason he is, he had a great year last year with the Twins. He went to the Giants, kind of went down a little bit in production, but towards the end of the year, he got he got back to what he was doing. And a lot of that you can say is because of the move. It was a new uh, ballpark. He actually went against a lot better pitchers yeah. in the NL West than when he was in the AL Central. Mm -hmm. um, so you know. You, you kind of have some issues there, and he's got to learn a little bit. Um, but I'm a Giants fan. I'm not even excited about Eduardo Nunez. Yeah. I, I really like Matt Duffy. He was a better at bat um, overall, in my opinion. He was a guy who, when you needed a, a good base hit, he, he could do it. Eduardo Nunez, when he gets, if he gets on base, he's fantastic. Yeah. He's a lot faster. Um, I'll, I'll get into that in a second. He hit 288 last year with 16 home runs, uh, 67 RBIs, and he had 40 stolen bases. 
a lot of he was hitting over 340 before he came to San Francisco. Right. I remember that because I remember talking to you about it, like, man, I'm really liking this Nunez kid. Because he was already putting up, I think, 18, 19 stolen bases right before the trade deadline. Yeah. His numbers were there, and again, I'm the one that's a sucker for batting average, and I see this high three, I'm like, man, I gotta have him. And I remember, I think I picked him up for about three weeks. And he just kind of, is, and it was right around the time where he was still hot with, with the Twins, and then he moves over to the Giants and kind of, kind of got cold a little bit, where I was like, not sure about that, but I kind of watched him throughout the season, and you just still saw it wasn't, I mean, it, the production got a little bit better at the end of the year, but he wasn't the same. No. So. Yeah. Uh, they haven't projected that hitting 280 again, 13 home runs, 63 RBIs, 38 stolen bases. Here's the thing. As a Giants fan, last year we had Angel Pagan, we had Denard Spam, and we had Hunter Pence. That, that was our outfield. That's a, that's a good speed outfield. Now, when Pagan went down, we threw in Gregor Blanco. We lost Pagan and we lost Blanco. We lost two guys who, who have speed. We replaced them with Denard Spam, uh, who, who we did have last year. But we also replaced them with Eduardo Nunez. The issue with Eduardo Nunez is this is always the, the question with a leadoff hitter. If he gets on base. If he gets on base. That's the question. If he does get on base, he's going to have stolen bases. The guy is incredibly fast. I actually didn't even know he was that fast until he came to San Francisco. I didn't know how many stolen bases he had mm -hmm. until he got there. And I was like, man, this guy's good. Giants need that because that's the way the Giants play. That's why they had to come. That is why they kept Gregor Blanco. Um, with those guys missing, Nunez has to step up. And when he came to San Francisco, he didn't look comfortable. Yeah. And I was actually, honestly... Judging by what the Giants have done in years past, I was really, really shocked that they even re-signed Nunez. But I think it came to a point where they were like, who else are we going to get? Right. Uh, do, we, do we trust Christian Arroyo, who's, who's the, uh, who's the uh, prospect that the Giants have in AAA? Is he ready? So they kind of were like, well, let's get Nunez for another year. Let's see how Christian Arroyo does. Because I feel like once... Christian Arroyo is ready, Nunez is gone. Mm -hmm. um, but if Nunez can get on base, if he can hit 280, man, I'm praying that you do. Because that would be great. And he's going to get a lot of those the 38 stolen bases. I think he can get 40 if yeah. how fast he is. If but he has to get on base, though. That's the thing. Exactly. That's always the question. Uh, I'll, let you, I'll let you go ahead. And My thing about Nunez is, is, you know, now that there's the Barry Bonds as the um, specialist now that's hired with the Giants, and he's obviously primarily hitting. So maybe he'll have some sort of influence on helping if he's going to be more down on the field. Don't know what his role will be other than special advisor. Maybe that advising will be, you know, talking to players, maybe getting, uh, you know, helping them with hitting. Nunez is someone that could probably do 280. I actually will think he'll underachieve in that aspect. I actually probably honestly see about 260, 270 maybe. Uh, RBIs, I don't see them changing at all. I don't see his home runs being 16 to 13 at all. I, I think that they'll be down. I'll be surprised if he gets to 10 at all at any point in the season. If anything, I think what will help the Giants is they don't need a home run hitter because they've got Posey for that. And uh, I think what I would really like to is, is just get on base. You're going to run around those bases. You're going to get hit home because we do have some good hitters. Mm -hmm. And our pitchers are like Bumgarner and Cueto, they're going to keep us – in the game and they're going to keep it close if it gets out of hand or they're just going to shut the door on the other team just because they're locked down pitchers. But for Nunez, he just needs to get on base and that's just going to require hitting. I know that when he was with the Twins right before he got traded, he was hitting power in a dome and it was about three, it was about 300 plus average, which I think he can probably get there if he changes his games. Don't hit, stop with the power, get on base because what did he bat in the lineup when he was uh, through all that? I want to say he was leadoff at some points, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he yeah. Really did leadoff. I can see him being a leadoff because was I think Pagan was leadoff for a bit. I see him probably getting intertwined with that, and he could very easily do this again. But he's got to change up his hitting. He can't do for power anymore. He's got to be smarter. Uh, maybe that means waiting for your balls and strikes so that way you get on base more with walks. So if you're not going to do it, the hitting. I just don't see 280 at this point just because. When he got with the Giants, kind of tail off, did get good, but now that now that you have this whole summer to kind of, I guess, improve, maybe that's too much time to cool down. So we'll see, though. I mean, it's kind of more so 
he's got to prove himself up to the Giants because who knows, he could be dropped down to Triple A just because of the production. We'll call up our uh, our uh, who was the guy you were prospect saying? Christian Ronaldo. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So who knows? A lot of things can happen, but I think I don't think Nunez will get 280. I think he'll get just a little under that. But he's got to change his game up a little bit though to be yeah. more consistent. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Last year, last year was his contract year, mm -hmm. and. When you have a baseball player with a contract year, honestly, you, it's hard to judge. It, it really is. Um, there was a guy that I really wanted, I, actually from LA, uh, was Justin Turner. Mm -hmm. Justin Turner, I've watched because my, my wife is a Dodger fan, so we watched a lot of Dodger games. Mm -hmm. And I saw this Justin Turner kid, this guy was legit. He got better and better every year. Then he got to his contract year and he had a stellar year, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was a fluke because I've seen what the kid could do. Mm -hmm. And so then he got signed to a big contract uh, with the Dodgers. And I was really mad at the Giants not even trying to go after him because I would rather have him because he's a power hitter, but he's a guy who can hit for average. Mm -hmm. um, he's not going to get the stolen bases that you have with Eduardo and Nunez. I get that. But if he's played the third base position uh, for since he's been in the bigs, mm -hmm. so why not go after him? Eduardo Nunez is still learning the third base position. So that was my issue with uh, with Nunez. It was it was a contract year, so now all of a sudden his numbers are inflated. Kind of makes me wonder. I haven't really seen much of him uh, mm -hmm. until this year. Uh, like I like I alluded to, we lost Pagan and Blanco, and replaced that speed with uh, Span and Nunez. And I honestly, another reason I don't like uh, Eduardo Nunez is because Denard Span is going to be the leadoff hitter because he's more of a consistent hitter. He's a guy who has a, a, a higher chance of getting that 300 average mark uh, more than Eduardo Nunez. But I feel like Eduardo Nunez is going to hit in the 8th spot. And the reason I would do that, and I'm, now knowing Bochy, he, he'll try everything. Yeah. Um, but having him in the 8th spot, then you have the pitcher hitting that. Or you can have the pitcher hitting eighth, and then have the Eduardo Nunez hitting ninth. That way you have a runner on base either before or after the pitcher. Um, before the pitcher, so you can bunt the runner over, and or he could steal it, and then you can bunt him over to third if you want, mm -hmm. which would be fantastic. And he's got that kind of speed where you could do that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you have him hitting behind the pitcher, uh, you get a guy who is very fast on the base pass, so when Span comes up, he can knock him in or uh, move them to first and third. Then you have your second guy who, and I would honestly have Brandon Crawford at the number two, um, and he's a, he's been hitting very well. Yeah. Uh, he might try to come in. If not, then you have Posey or, or whoever else you want, or Brandon Bell. So, uh, but the reason that scares me is if he's lower in the batting line, he's not gonna get as many at bats. Right. He's not gonna get as many stolen bases. Um, and he definitely in a, in AT and T Park, you're not going to hit a ton of home, a ton of home runs unless you're strong. Right. And Eduardo Nunez is not a typical home run hitter. He's right. not. Like you said, he had a lot of home runs in a dome. Right. He only had four home runs with San Francisco. He had twelve coming to San Francisco. Right. He had sixteen all year. You know, it's it's inflated numbers. It's a contract year. You move to San Francisco, you're in a world of hurt if you're. Well, uh, we appreciate you guys, uh, all your support that you guys have given us. We really appreciate all the feedback that we've gotten. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, follow us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, it's all Drew Code Sports Talk. Thank you guys very much.